Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about bipolar disorder. So this is going to be my series of mental illnesses slash disorders. Again, I've been not functioning well on my own, my own problems. And these podcasts used to be discipline and creativity, fun. You know, some of the movies and stuff I did, uh, reviews. But I think I'm winding down and I wanted to look back and say, would I regret not doing anything? And one of the things I thought of was, you know, the five to nine or whatever it is, you know, major mental illnesses, disorders, and just get it out on my channel, something I wanted to do and have it there. I can still decide on doing more. I do have like a backlog, you know, like a movie I seen or a TV show, Mandalorian, and I might put those out after. But I want to get all these out at one chunk. So here we are again discussing a mental illness slash disorder. And that's another thing with classifications and stuff. I'm not a doctor, but I just try to be a good friend, you know, good brother, whatever, nephew, whatever the fuck we are. I'll be reading from the National Institute of Mental Health, and I don't think they give like credit for the, who wrote the article or whatever, but I'll take a quick glance. I don't think so. No, it did say it was reviewed in 2023. They like to keep up with these things, these real proper website type things. As always, I'll put the link for this in the description. And I might touch on one more article website that has like three videos in it, uh, like a series, which is really cool. So I'll touch on that maybe at the end. But I'll start now. Bipolar Disorder Overview. Bipolar disorder, formerly called manic depressive illness or manic depression, is a mental illness that causes unusual shifts in a person's mood, energy, activity levels, and concentration. These shifts can make it difficult to carry out day-to-day -day tasks. There are three types of bipolar disorder. All three types involve clear changes in mood, energy, and activity levels. These moods range from periods of extremely up, elated, irritable, or energized behavior, known as manic episodes, to very down, sad, indifferent, or hopeless periods, known as depressive episodes. Less severe manic periods are known as hip, hip, hippomanic episodes. <laughs> uh, leave it to me to fuck up these words. Bipolar 1 disorder is defined by manic episodes that last for at least seven days, nearly every day for most of the day, or by manic symptoms that are so severe that the person needs immediate medical care. Usually, depressive episodes occur as well, typically lasting at least two weeks. Episodes of depression with mixed features, having depressive symptoms and manic symptoms at the same time, are also possible. Experiencing four or more episodes of mania or depression within one year is called rapid cycling. Bipolar 2 Disorder is defined by a pattern of depressive episodes and hypomanic episodes. Hypomanic episodes are less severe than the manic episodes in bipolar 1 disorder. And, alright, the last disorder, oh boy. Cyclorhythmic disorder, also called cyclorhythmia, is defined by reoccurring hip, hypomanic, hypomanic and depressive symptoms that are not intense enough or do not last long enough to qualify as a hypno hypomanic or hypomanic or depressive episodes. Sometimes, a person might experience symptoms of bipolar disorder that do not match the three categories listed above. And this is referred to as other specified and unspecified bipolar and related disorders. Bipolar disorder is often diagnosed during late adolescence, teen years, or early adulthood. Sometimes, bipolar symptoms can appear in children. Although the symptoms may vary over time, bipolar disorder usually requires lifelong treatment. Followed, or following a prescribed treatment plan can help people manage their symptoms and improve their quality of life. Signs and Symptoms People with bipolar disorder experience periods of unusually intense emotion and changes in sleep patterns and activity levels, and engage in behaviors that are out of character for them, <laughs> often without recognizing their likely harmful or undesirable effects. These distinct periods are called mood episodes. Mood episodes are very different from the person's usual moods, 
and behaviors. During an episode, the symptoms last every day for most of the day. Episodes may last for longer periods such as several days or weeks. Symptoms of manic episodes, and there's a little a thing here, and symptoms of depressive episodes. So let's go through symptoms of manic episode. Feeling very up, high, elated, or extremely irritable or touchy. Feeling jumpy or wired, more active than usual. Having a decreased need for sleep. Talking fast about a lot of different things. Flight of ideas, it's called. Racing thoughts. Feeling able to do many things at once without getting tired. Having excessive appetite for food, drinking, sex, or other pleasurable activities. Feeling unusually important, talented, or powerful. <laughs> oh boy, some of these things just paint a picture of people you know. Symptoms of a depressive episode. Feeling very down or sad or anxious. Feeling slowed down or restless. Having trouble falling asleep. Waking up too early or sleeping too much. Talking very slowly. Feeling unable to find anything to say or forgetting a lot. Having trouble concentrating on making decisions. Feeling unable to do even simple things. Having a lack of interest in almost all activities. Feeling hopeless or worthless. Or thinking about death or suicide. And by the way, when you get into these things, you can you, find, you know the person that exhibits these things. Exactly. You've dealt with them with feeling important or talented or powerful. And you've also dealt with them when they're thinking about suicide and they're being worthless. It's, it's fascinating to me. Again, I'll interject. You know, I have a lot of this association with not only my own depression, my own problems, but my mom had many, you know, things going on. I've talked about that in several episodes. I'll continue. Some people have both manic and depressive symptoms in the same episode. And this is called an episode with mixed features. During an episode with mixed features, people may feel very sad, empty or hopeless, while at the same time feeling extremely energized. A person may have bipolar disorder even if their symptoms are less extreme. For example, some people with bipolar 2 disorder experience uh, hypomania, a less severe form of mania. During a hypomanic episode, a person may feel very good, be able to get things done, and keep up with day-to-day -day life. The person may not feel that anything is wrong, but family and friends may recognize changes in mood or activity levels as possible symptoms of bipolar disorder. Without proper treatment, People with hypomania can develop severe mania or depression. Uh, sometimes you want to grab people, make them listen to you, you know? But this is what happens. You, you see it, they don't. Diagnosis. Receiving the right diagnosis and treatment can help people with bipolar disorder lead healthy and active lives. Talking with a healthcare provider is the first step. The healthcare provider can complete a physical exam and other necessary medical tests to rule out other possible causes. I'll make a little injection here. A lot of times, a lot of these things have to do with going to the doctor and then getting your blood tested and things like that. And it really has to do with, um, you know, ruling out certain things. So, um, I'll continue. Uh, mental health care providers usually diagnose bipolar disorder based on a person's symptoms, lifelong, lifetime history, experiences, and in some cases, family history. Accurate diagnosis in youth is particularly important. And there's a link here. It's all highlighted in blue. Find tips to help prepare for and get the most out of your visit with your healthcare provider. And I love these things. I talk about it a lot. When you read some of these site, websites, especially good ones that have blue highlighted or you know special highlighted words, they lead to other links that can give you more information and help you out in different ways. Bipolar disorder and other conditions. Many people with bipolar disorder also have other mental disorders or conditions such as anxiety disorders, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, misuse of drugs or alcohol, or eating disorders. And by the way, I think the next one I'll put out is the ADHD. Sometimes people who have severe manic or depressive episodes also have symptoms of psychosis, which may include hallucinations or delusions. The psychotic episodes, uh, psychotic symptoms tend to match the person's extreme mood. For example, some people having psychotic episodes, uh, psychotic symptoms during a depressive episode may falsely believe they are financially ruined, while someone having psychotic symptoms during a manic episode may falsely believe they are famous 
or have special powers. Looking at a person's symptoms over the course of the illness and examining their family history can help a health care provider determine whether the person has bipolar disorder along with another disorder. And that's very common. Like I said, my mom, you know, people I've met in my life. Risk factors. Researchers are studying possible causes of bipolar disorder. Most agree that there are many factors that are likely to contribute to a person's chance of having the disorder. Brain structure and functioning. Some studies show that the brains of people with bipolar disorder differ in certain ways than the brains of people who do not have bipolar disorder or any other mental disorder. Learning about these brain differences may help scientists understand bipolar disorder and determine which treatments will work best. At this time, healthcare providers base the diagnosis and treatment plan on a person's symptoms and history rather than brain imaging or other diagnostic tests. And by the way, that gap is closing. I've done articles on science breakthroughs. We are getting extremely talented and informed with brain scans, and it's becoming uh, hopeful in that way. Genetics. Some research suggests that people with certain genes are more likely to develop bipolar disorder. Research also shows that people who have a parent or sibling with bipolar disorder have an increased chance of having the disorder themselves. Many genes are involved, and no one gene causes the disorder. Learning more about how genes play a role in bipolar disorder may help researchers develop new treatments. Treatments and therapies. Treatments can help many people, including those with the most severe forms of bipolar disorder. An effective treatment plan usually includes a combination of medication and psychotherapy, also called talk therapy. Bipolar disorder is a lifelong illness. Episodes of mania and depression typically come back over time. Between episodes, Many people with bipolar disorder are free of mood changes, but some people may have lingering symptoms. Long-term, continuous treatment can help people manage these symptoms. Medications. Certain medications can help manage symptoms of bipolar disorder. Some people may need to try different medications and work with their healthcare provider to find the medications that work best. I'm going to interject here. It's very important. Extremely important, especially when you think you know things when you're on your game and you're the boss you know you got everything you got superpowers you're important keep in touch and keep making it going back and making these concoctions or whatever you want to call them uh you know, recipes and to get what works anyway the most common types of medications that healthcare providers prescribe include mood stabilizers and atypical antipsychotics mood stabilizers such as lithium or valparate can help prevent mood episodes or reduce their severity. Lithium can also decrease the risk of suicide. Healthcare providers may include medications that target sleep or anxiety as part of the treatment plan. Although bipolar depression is often treated with antidepressant medication, a mood st stabilizer must be taken as well. Taking the antidepressant without a mood stabilizer can trigger a manic episode or rapid cycling in a person with bipolar disorder. I think that's important. I'm going to read it again. Although bipolar depression is often treated with antidepressant medication, a mood stabilizer must be taken as well. Taking an antidepressant without a mood stabilizer can trigger a manic episode or rapid cycling in a person with bipolar disorder. Gotta be careful. That's why I want to do these things. Is let people know about these things. Even family members and friends. Because people with bipolar disorder are more likely to seek help when they are depressed than when they are experiencing mania or hypomania, it is important for healthcare providers to take a careful medical history to ensure that bipolar disorder is not mistaken for depression. People taking medication should talk with their healthcare provider to understand the risks and benefits of the medication. Tell their healthcare provider about any prescription drugs, over-the-counter medications, or supplements they are already taking. Report any concerns about side effects to a healthcare provider right away. The healthcare provider may need to change the dose or try a different medication. Remember that medication for bipolar disorder must be taken consistently as prescribed, even when one is not, even when one is feeling well. This is so important, and I can't stress it enough how impactful this is to people. Got to take the medication. You think you can get off it? You know, you get off it for how long? For two weeks? How long does it take to get back on and to stabilize? Nine weeks? Sometimes more? 
Anyway. It is important to talk to healthcare before stopping a prescribed medication. Stopping a medication suddenly may lead to symptoms to worsen or come back. You can find basic information about medications on NIMH's medications webpage. Read the latest medication warnings, patient medication guides, oh, and information on newly approved medications on the Food and Drug Administration FDA website. Psychotherapy. Psychotherapy, also called talk therapy, can be an effective part of treatment for people with bipolar disorder. Psychotherapy is a term for treatment techniques that aim to help people identify and change troubling emotions, thoughts, and behaviors. This type of therapy can provide support, education, and guidance to people with bipolar disorder and their families. Cognitive behavioral therapy is an important treatment for depression, and CBT can be adapted for treatment of insomnia, can be especially helpful as part of treatment for bipolar depression. Treatment may also include newer therapies designed specifically for a treatment of bipolar disorder, including interpersonal and social rhythm therapy, PSRT, and family-focused therapy. And there's a link. Learn more about the various types of psychotherapies. Now, this is why it took me a while with me and my fiance before she passed away that I, I kept trying to figure out how I would combine a meditation and breathing technique with cognitive behavior therapy. And that's what some of my podcasts are about. And it's, you know what, maybe I should redo it because I didn't listen to it in a while. It's like one of my first ones I did because I just wanted to get my stuff out there. And um, it's all about using breathing techniques and certain mental exercises. Anybody ever wants to get in touch with me, I've helped friends with anger issues, depression, suicide. Um, and remember, I'm, no, I have no degrees. I'm just a friend or someone who just knows a little bit more about it. All right. Uh, other treatment options. Some people may find other treatments helpful in managing their bipolar symptoms. Electroconvulsive therapy. ECT is a brain stimulation procedure that can help relieve severe symptoms of bipolar disorder. Healthcare providers may consider ECT when a person's illness has not improved after other treatments or in causes that require rapid response, such as people who have high suicide risk or canatonia, a state of unresponsiveness. Repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, RTMS, is a type of brain stimulation that uses magnetic waves to relieve depression over a series of treatment sessions. Although not as powerful as ECT, RTMS does not require general anesthesia and has a low risk of negative effects on memory and thinking. Light therapy is the best evidence-based treatment for seasonal affective disorder, SAD, and many people with bipolar disorder experience seasonal worsening or depression or SAD in the winter. SAD is SAD. Light therapy may also be used to treat lesser forms of seasonal worsening or bipolar disorder depression. Now, I did a podcast back in the day on red light therapy, and I was so impressed. They're doing some amazing things. Anyway, I'll continue. Unlike specific psychotherapy and medication treatments that are specifically proven to improve bipolar disorder symptoms, complementary health, health approaches for bipolar disorders, such as natural products, are not based on current knowledge or evidence. For more information, visit the National Care. So, you know, it's not really okay to say, you know, my friends are telling me all this stuff, I'm just going to take some supplements. And you still want to go to your healthcare provider, get, you know, treatment, work, where you that could supplement things. Finding treatment. A healthcare provider is a good re- resource and can be the first step in searching for help. Find tips to help prepare and get the most out of your visit. That's highlighted in blue. To find mental health treatment services in your area, call the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration. Uh, S-A-M-H-S-A National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP which is 4357 Visit the SAMHSA online treatment locator which is highlighted in blue or text your zip code to 435748 Learn more about finding help on the NIMH website and that's a blue link If you or someone you know is struggling or having thoughts of suicide call it or text at 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline at 988. Or chat at, there's a link, 988lifeline.org. In life threatening situations, call 911. Coping with Bipolar Disorder. 
Living with bipolar disorder can be challenging, but there are ways to help make it easier. Work with a healthcare provider to develop a treatment plan and stick with it. Treatment is the best way to start feeling better. Follow the treatment plan as directed. Work with a plan or work with a healthcare provider to adjust the plan as needed. That's super important. Structure your activities. Try to have a routine for eating, sleeping, and exercising. Try regular, vigorous exercise like jogging, swimming, or bicycling, which can help with depression and anxiety. Promote better sleep and support your heart and brain health. Track your moods, activities, and overall health and well-being to help recognize your mood swings. Ask trusted friends and family members for help in keeping up with your treatment plan. That's, you know, when they cut you out of your life, or they threaten to call the cops on you, it's not easy. And I can't stress this enough how much unconditional love you have to have for people with mental illness and disorders. So as much as frustrating as I get or arguments I've had, the things I've said to my mom in the kitchen to get her better, I've talked about this, you know, her being like 80 pounds near death, not eating. It, it just can, it can affect you and your people around you. But if you're the person with this illness and you're cutting people out and you have some delusions about them being bad people and it just there's no evidence for it and you're making up stuff and it just gets wildly out of control. Be patient. Improvement takes time. Staying connected with sources of social support can help. Long-term ongoing treatment can help control symptoms and enable you to live a healthy life. Now it goes on to, this is like cool, I like that they do this, join a study. Clinical trials are research studies that look for new ways to prevent, detect, or treat diseases and conditions. The goal of clinical trials is to determine if a new test or treatment works and is safe. Although individuals may benefit from being part of a clinical trial, Participants should be aware that the primary purpose of a clinical trial is to gain new scientific knowledge so that others may be better helped in the future. Researchers at NIMH and around the country conduct many studies with patients and healthy volunteers. We have new and better treatment options today because of what clinical trials uncovered years ago. Be part of tomorrow's medical breakthroughs. Talk to your healthcare provider about clinical trials, their benefits and risks, and whether one is right for you. To learn more about a study, visit, and then there's links. Uh, clinical wa- trial webpage, there's a government page. And then there's learn more, free brochures and shareable resources, which is great. You have highlighted links, bipolar disorder, bipolar disorder in children and teens, bipolar disorder in teens and young adults, know the signs, and shareable resources on bipolar, bipolar disorder. All linkable, and it tells you what they do. We have digital resources, including graphics and messages. And then we got multimedia. Um, NIMH experts discuss bipolar disorder in adults. Uh, Mental Health Care Minute. Bipolar, you know, these are links that are going to be probably for uh, videos, which I think I'm going to get to in a couple of minutes. Maybe not associated with this website, though. Research and studies. There's another thing here for journal articles. Treatment for bipolar disorder in adults. A systematic review. Bipolar Disorder Statistics. Now, this page was last reviewed, and like I said, I want to get these things out there, so if I do decide I'm going to not do any more podcasts, upload any more videos, that I would have at least uh, the goal I set out to do done and completed to an extent that I feel comfortable with, and I wasn't feeling that comfort before. And let me do a quick check on this other thing. This other one is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. I think it's called NAMI. And this goes into bipolar disorder. But what it does is it has a three videos, a series of videos. And I think it's a real smart thing. It's a two-part podcast series. The Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Ken Duckworth, discusses, discuss, uh, guy discusses, Discussions on bipolar disorder that often it offers insights from individuals, family members, and mental health care providers. And you can there's a link to read the transcripts. That's awesome. No, not that I want to read the fucking transcripts, but um, note content includes discussions on topics such as suicide attempts and maybe triggering. So this is goes on to the same thing. It's bipolar disorders and mental illness that causes dramatic shifts in person's mood and energy. Um 
you know, and it goes into the symptoms, mania, depression, uh, what the causes are, genetic stress, brain structure, diagnosis, and, you know, four d types of disorders. And then the other one had three. So let me go here. So it looks like a different treatment. Let me look at this. Uh, bipolar 1, bipolar 2, cyclorhythmic disorder, and bipolar disorder, other specified and unspecified. All right, so it's just putting a different thing in there. And the treatment here, psychotherapy, medications, self-management strategies like education and recognition of an episode's early symptoms, complementary health approaches such as aerobic exercise, meditation, faith and prayer can support but not replace treatment. Now, let's say that fucking one more time. Faith and prayer can support but not replace treatment. All right? So we know prayer is bullshit. Don't get me started on religious fucking nonsense that for fucking thousands of years has just made things worse. And then they go into the latest research, which is cool. Systematic treatment enhances, enhancement for bipolar disorder, also known as Step BD. And they followed over 4,000 people diagnosed with bipolar disorder over time with different treatments. So that's a great way to look at things and kind of narrow down where you fit in and what you've already done. Maybe you're somebody who has it, the treatments aren't working, and you, you know, you're having problems getting the medication right. You can look at some of these um, links and uh, resources to figure out maybe where you fit in. Related conditions are obviously anxiety, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. I think that'll be the next one I put out. PTSD, substance abuse disorders. And it goes into the same type of thing. Um, but I'm going to put both links in there anyway because I really like the idea of having uh, three videos. And one of them is a two-part video. And sometimes when you're reading these websites, even when I'm reading them, I flub every word. Some of them even have like a listen to, so you can have someone professional like read it to you. But even in that is where we are in, in life in this day and age. Um, you can go and watch videos. They're succinct and made short and sweet just to nail what you got to do, figure it out. And there are long, detailed videos with, you know, talk with, you know, language and stuff that's a little more <laughs> elevated than a poor schmuck from Brooklyn like I am. And then this vast array of, um, you know, resources and stuff might be something for you or something for someone you know. Could some of these symptoms be, you know, seen in your younger sister, a teenager, and their youth going into their adulthood? Can people wonder why their brother or their sister or their friend is in, in a certain way or a funk? And, you know, I just happen to be, and I've talked about this, help people with suicide hotlines and gone into psych, uh, you know, psychiatry stuff and know how to spot things like fallacies and what words are being used and how they use them. Words with finality to them. And when you're talking with people who have worthless attitudes and like they have no value and they see no, you know, they see no point to anything. But you don't get to that with some people. Some people, it's just, you're just wondering why their mood to change and why something's different. And with every di everything I've gone over, I might have flubbed what is an illness and what is... Um, you know, a disorder, but I've read the article, so hopefully I've gotten that straight. But in my natural talking like this, I even mess things up. Like I said, I'm not a doctor. I have no degree. I just have over 36 years of research and interest in this. And it started at 13 years old. My mom, mental illness, going into um, my teen years and quitting, quitting, go, quitting school and going to work. To a year or two later, my friend killing himself in front of me uh, with a gun, and I was like a foot away. And then just go through every trial and tribulation anybody goes through in life. I'm not special. I've never people who go to war and they, they lose their children, their family, their nephews. This is an ongoing thing called life. And hopefully my bid to put these things out there and to get it out to help maybe help one person, two people, will be worth it. Because, like I said, if I do decide not to do any more, I want to be able to look back and smile. I got over 300 videos. Um, I did it for three years. I got 
lots of funny videos and little quirks they were in there about watching silly TV shows and, and movies. I've even done like a politics everything. There. I've even done some live testing stuff. I went like three hours, six hours once just to see how if I could make it like I was a radio station and had to go, you know, and be on all the time. And getting closer to the end of this, um, I want to feel proud. I want to feel like it was worth it and that I have many regrets. So I do got more to do. They will be out there. I think ADHD will be the next one. Might even do several more. And even if I say in those that it is my last and I'm done, I might actually put out more because I have stuff in the uh, in the vault or the bank, or whatever you call it. So, you know, Mandalorian Season 3. I've got the outline for that and a couple of things done. Like, why not just put it out? That type of thing. But I'm being honest with myself here and everybody. I'm not in a good place. I need to refocus and decide what I need to do. Uh, a lot of my options are limited. Things get worse, it seems, over time. And I don't mean my mental disorder, but the things surrounding it. When I mean, you're not able to go and do certain hours of work or whatever, and everything gets affected. Some people might quit their job at lunch and just never go back and try to find another venue. Some people keep struggling and can only go out and work four or five hours a day and they have to find something like Uber that'll let them work certain hours when they feel they're capable. And we all go through this. Some people are sitting there laughing or just oblivious to anything. And I'm happy for you and I love you all. But I'm in a weird place. There are people I know that are in weird places. And these are things that are stigmatized in culture, in our culture, in America. And I don't want it to be that way. I don't do rants that much on religion and stuff like that. Although I think it's a harmful aspect of life right now for society. I mean, we're in 2023 and there's still fucking slavery and women getting uh, mutilated, um, atheists getting their heads cut off, gays getting beaten and killed. This is ridiculous. We should be in an enlightened age. Maybe it takes a couple of people like me, a couple of people like my friends doing their own thing. And this is a day and age where someone in some war-torn country could raise their phone up with the camera on. And let the world see what's going on in an instant. This has never been done before. Think of all the wars and all the travesties and atrocities that have been done across this world. And we live in an age now where someone can have their phone, raise it up, and immediately they can put it to anywhere. This change will happen. It will happen maybe slowly, but it is an information age that can't be stopped. And forget about all the lies, the you know, all that stuff you know, the false bullshit out there. And they use this method. And I've said it before, if I'm good at what I do, well, criminals and low lives are good at what they do. But I think in the end, the truth wins out. For me, it's truth over feelings. That's my motto. And I don't mean telling people they're fat or looking whatever just to make them feel shitty and hurt. No, I'm talking about when it matters that you have to be truthful. And you can't worry about feelings. I've had plenty of friends that come 17 years, 15 years later and thank me for what happened, but apologize for, you know, the situation because I will not watch a friend deteriorate and go down the line for suicide or anger issues and beating their wife or their children. And I, I won't tolerate it. And that creates division. And when you want to help somebody, it gets even worse because they're in one of their episodes and you're being helpful and you're the bad guy. But I'm I'm okay with that because I still love you. Everybody who's listening to this, everybody I've argued with on the phone, everybody I've argued with on Facebook and websites and Twitter, the debates on fucking social media, everything. I love humanity at a general level until I know more. And once I know more, I'm a human. Like things change. Biases come in. There are people I love so much there's nothing you can do. Maybe heinous crimes against humanity. Like, you know, children. Like, I, Yeah, I get it. But at the core, I love everybody. I want to hug everybody. And my problems don't allow me to do that because I can't do it. It's a weird fucking thing. But I can say that right now, that I love everybody. I wish you all the best. If this is the end of my podcast, so be it. Maybe I'll come back. Maybe I won't go away. Maybe I'll do more. 
But I want everybody to know I'm here. You see me on Facebook, any of my social media, Addiction Master. Just reach out to me. Say hi. doesn't have to be anything, you know. And I've had a lot of people, and I've made mistakes in life, and I've talked about them with certain people. And there's that danger also of when you're opening up to somebody, they just want ammunition. And granted, it wasn't their fault in the sense that they also have a mental illness or, you know, a disorder. But it can hurt, and it can make someone even like me <clears throat> very angry, bitter, and you got to let it go. I use my breathing and meditation techniques, and that's why I want to say to everybody again, I care for everybody. You're in my thoughts. Till next time, take care.